Hey, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today I am joined in our studio by our very own teardown engineer, Andrew. Thank you for coming in today. So, what did we do yesterday? Uh, yesterday, we took apart the new 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. And it was so disappointing. It, it was, scored a one. It was, it was scored a one. Yeah. It's internally pretty much the same. It scored one for all the same reasons as <sighs> the 2014 and the 2013. Yeah. And the biggest reason is the, the horribly glued in battery that just makes it very nearly impossible to pull out and replace. Right. And very difficult for recyclers to pull it out when they're recycling and need to separate the battery out before they can get anything useful out of the machine right. or shred the aluminum down. Yeah. So, but there was an upgrade that's pretty interesting and we decided to talk about it a little more today. We've that's got right. uh, the trackpad, the force touch trackpad, and we also brought in an older one just so we could do some comparisons. Can you tell us a little bit more right. about the um, ins and outs of our yeah. new trackpad here? So Apple first announced the, the new trackpad coming in the 12 inch MacBook. Uh, but they also gave us a sneak peek at that by including it as an upgrade in the 13 inch retina. So this is a slightly different implementation than the, the renders showed in the upcoming MacBook, but it should operate about the same way. And okay. while it looks pretty much the same on the, on the trackpad surface, it's pretty much sure. indistinguishable. It's they're both glass. They're, yeah. they're both it's the same, same size. Same glass surface, same size, mm -hmm. feels the same. Okay. What is different is underneath. So we used to have a, a single micro switch right here. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, hold this one up. Then. Yeah, single micro switch that would register every click okay. while the whole trackpad bounced on these two hinges back here. Right. And now the trackpad doesn't have that diving board type thing. Instead, it's floating on four metal springs, uh, each with a, a strain gauge mm -hmm. that works to measure the flex on those metal springs and measure the pressure spread out across the four posts. So basically you can click anywhere on the trackpad and, mm -hmm. and get the same feel. Whereas That's right. with this one, you're you're mostly clicking at the bottom. There's here. definitely a hinge feeling with the old trackpad. Right, right. And this, you can click anywhere. You can click up here or down here, and it'll measure the force that you're applying on all four of those posts. So it'll know how hard you're pressing, pressing and where you're pressing and how hard. So Andrew, you mentioned strain gauges. Can you explain yeah. that a little bit and, and where they are on the trackpad? Absolutely. So each of these four metal springs uh, is able to flex slightly as you push down on the trackpad nice. from above. And this tiny little component here, we believe, is actually a series of strain gauges that measure that flex and convert that into a pressure sensing of that, that particular spring. Okay. And, and a strain gauge works off of a, a principle called Poisson's ratio, which is that as you stretch a wire, the diameter will decrease and the length will increase, and that'll increase the electrical resistance of that wire. So in this tiny little sticker right here are many, many zigzags of that one wire going back and forth in the direction of the flex. So as it flexes down like this, the wire is lengthened and the resistance increases. As it flexes up like this, the, the wire is shortened and gets thicker and the resistance decreases. So there's a little microcontroller in here measuring that resistance for each of these four components and then translating that into a pressure or a force. That was pretty cool too. Um, uh, when they talked about it in the keynote, talking about um, you know your signature or fast forwarding, it's it's all in the pressure and it can feel how mm -hmm. hard you're pressing. Yeah, I think Apple is definitely trying to start a new standard for trackpad use. They're sort mm -hmm. of sticking to their guns once and for all for the single button model <laughs> yeah. that Steve Jobs first introduced, and now they're just adding a new dimension to that single button. Basically, you can right. press lightly or hard, and you can do the the force click, which is a deeper click into the Great. So let's talk a little bit about this technology that we have here. Mm -hmm. Now this is the Taptic engine. What are these parts exactly here? This is just a... This is a series of just four electromagnets. Just uh, electromagnets? They're just electromagnets. Very simple. Which we've had for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Since I think 1824 <laughs> was when us, yeah. our engineers and scientists came okay. up with that one. And and so how do they how do they work? How does the trackpad read? So, so this little module here is what Apple's calling the Taptic Engine, and it's four electromagnets with a fancy name mm -hmm. that line up with this uh, ferromagnetic steel bar okay. that is attached to the bottom of the trackpad, but is separate. So by uh, powering or depowering these magnets or changing the direction of the polarity on them, it can essentially pull or tug on this little gap here right here, which will move the trackpad up above and it can kind of flex a little bit on the four spring posts. So by, by rapidly changing this, it can create a slight buzz 
And when you press on this trackpad, it feels and sounds exactly like a click on an older trackpad without actually clicking anything. So they've okay. done a really great way to remove what we're used to and simulate it. Wow. This is really, really cool. So um, last, uh, what, what do we have here? This is, this is just one of those taken apart. Yeah, yeah? so this is just copper, uh, I think it's called motor winding wire. Okay. And it's a very thinly insulated wire. I can pull this piece off and get a better look at it. And that's not going back, huh? I don't think so, no. <laughs> so, this, so maybe don't take that part apart. Yeah, this is probably not a user repairable part, but we just unwound this to see what was underneath. And this is just a, a ferromagnetic core that makes the electromagnet stronger. And Great. originally this was wrapped all the way around it and you can see there's quite a bit of wire uh, on each of these four electromagnets. Yeah. Well, needless to say, this is a very complicated trackpad compared to yes, trackpads in the past. Definitely. Um, and we're seeing it in the 13-inch Pro, mm -hmm. and then we should be seeing it in the MacBook, correct? But right. it wasn't in the Airs and the 15-inch Pro. That's so correct. be looking for those. And uh, thanks so much for coming in yeah, and explaining to. it a little, little further. Yeah, glad we could take a look at it. All right, thanks. Great.